Welcome to Christian Statesman. I'm your host, Zach Wagner, and this is episode 51, Super Bowl Boredom. I grew up in my formative years in the Deep South. Anyone who was there at the time realizes that the South has one commonality, sports. They say football is bigger than God in the South, and God is pretty darn big. As a youth, we played baseball in the summer, football in the fall, and into early winter. The mild winter months were spent shooting hoops while we waited for baseball to start again. Baseball was the prominent sport in those days. It was still America's game. Football was very popular also, but mainly at the college level. The old Bear Bryant days and dominance of Alabama was a frequent subject of conversation. As a child, you were expected to play sports regularly and excel. The annual helmet painting and uniform preparation for their children was a community-wide project for proud fathers. As an adult, I've cheered my alma mater on for three decades and spent 15 years with season tickets for our ubiquitous professional franchise. But no more. Somewhere along the way, professional football has replaced collegiate loyalties as the sport du jour. And there is no greater media production than the Super Bowl. From the weeks-long hype to the product commercials expensively produced and presented just for the occasion, the Super Bowl has become a greatly anticipated event for millions of Americans. I used to be one of those, but I resonate with the appeal no more. The family gathered at a brother's home for the annual festivities. From the beginning, anyone paying attention knew who would win the game and what the storyline would be. It was all about Tom Brady and the pursuit of the undeniable title of GOAT, the greatest quarterback ever, as the narrative reminds us. And indeed, that was the story of the game. Brady played admirably, and the Tampa Bay defense deserves credit for the win, especially their defensive line, pressuring Mahomes and the Chiefs incessantly. But it was obvious from the beginning that the game was going to be given to the Bucks, come what may, and the officiating made darn sure that storyline was sustained. There's a problem with professional sports, and often these days collegiate sports also. They are, for lack of a better word, fixed. Anyone who has read The Fix is In by Brian Twahey or Personal Foul by ex-NBA referee Tim Donahue will understand the problem. Sports has transitioned from the days of my childhood into a multi-billion dollar entertainment industry. And the fact is that, when pressed in court, the NBA admitted they are not in the business of competition, but in the business of entertainment. And if they manipulate their games to accentuate certain celebrity stars, that is their business, not ours. And this is the rub. Among all of the storylines to promote this year's Super Bowl, the Brady narrative was the most alluring. Thus, in the second quarter, we watched a series of suspicious calls help the Bucks establish an insurmountable lead on two straight touchdown drives. Their defense had to play up to the hype, and they did. But the Chiefs never stood a chance playing 18 versus 11. And knowing this, the Super Bowl took on for us the same artificial sheen that graces the Biden presidency. It all just seems like a pre-scripted show replete with costumes, elaborate sets, and positioned actors. The purity of competition is lost in a made-for-TV spectacle that has everyone, including the commentators, harping on the decided storyline. Brady and Gronk, Gronk and Brady, seven titles, the greatest of all time, with two different franchises. And taking nothing away from such historic accomplishment, one has to ask, does it really matter at all? While our country struggles under the specter of global socialism, while we are blatantly being dissolved and destroyed from within, how much does it really matter that Brady got number seven? It is a pleasant distraction at best, and even then, a manufactured one in several aspects. In short, it was hard to even stay fixed on the action. It was predictable and obvious. It was simply boring. I had books to read, articles to write, curriculum to assemble, people to awaken, and God to worship. A pleasant distraction from the business of the day, perhaps, but the luster of the great annual spectacle is dimmed, at least for me. Sports are a distraction. If you know more about Tom Brady's career statistics than you do about the destructive policies of our central banks and how your life and freedoms are changing, you are part of the problem. 
at least the MAGA hat in Brady's locker after the game bespoke some connection to things that really matter. Nevertheless, it is time to put away childish games and get on with the real business of life, that of preserving our faith and liberties. If you want to continue to enjoy the sidelining distractions of premeditated sports, you had better pay much more attention to these pressing issues than the manufactured theatrics. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends, and as always, have a blessed day.